Hello! So, uh, folks who are hoping to tune in seeing the next installment in the alphabetical history of uh, software and three-letter acronyms, uh, we decided to take a little interlude, because uh, I'm here at the, the, the Nahau Hotel in Berlin, the pinkest building in history, for DDD, or for Kandinsky, the conference about DDD. And uh, with me is Marco Holmeshoff, who basically invented Kandinsky, right? Yeah, like DDD is right. not your thing, but Kandinsky is your <laughs> thing. Yeah. So for the folks who, who haven't come across this, uh, what is DDD? What does it stand for and why is it important? So DDD stands for Domain Driven Design, and it's important because it's, um, it's focusing on um, taking the, the, the domain into account before you design a system. Mm -hmm. So it's literally uh, the design driven by the domain, meaning any kind of area of expertise that you care about, be it banking, insurance, um, line of business software of any business. And so um, the domain here yeah. means the stuff that the company does. Yeah, it's the area of expertise like that you banking, focus on. But they don't right, do groceries, right, so right. banking there is the domain. Right, okay, that's yeah. a domain. Um, the domain is, is a, it's a hierarchical term, right? So banking is a domain, but within banking you of course have some, let's say, part of security or fraud detection, which is also a domain. Mm -hmm. We call the subdomains. Yep. So any, a domain can be any area of expertise. So any line of business, any business unit you work in is uh, what domains are. So software has this, this sort of rich history of DD things, test-driven development, behavior yeah, yeah, development. Yeah. And then domain-driven come along, and they're like, well, it's not domain-driven development, it's domain-driven design. Yeah. Why the difference? Well, the difference is because it's a, it's a socio-technical thing. It's not mm -hmm. just code, it's not just building something. It is designing the entire system around it, meaning the people that work in the company, uh, they're structured in teams, and those teams work in contexts. And the context you are building has, uh, should reflect the problem space that you're working for. Right, so let's say you do Amazon, right? You build an online service. Um, you have payment, you have delivery, you have a shopping carting, you have advertisement, all these areas of expertise, they all need different parts of the software and you have teams that have to respond to those contexts. So be responsible for those contexts. So the design of the entire system is the social structure of the organization should reflect the domain you work in. The architecture should reflect that social structure so that if teams change, the software can change accordingly. And this entire thing is a design exercise. Mm -hmm. It's modeling, designing, and then building in, in the last instance. But the solution is just the small part. Uh, so how, does, how does this map onto uh, what Mel Conway was writing about with Conway's Law in the 60s? The, yeah. the, the, the you know, map yeah, yeah, yeah. organization communication structures. Yeah. Do you reflect it or do you try to rebuild it? No, no actually it's, uh, it's both. So um, there is a modeling to discover. That's uh, if you want to understand how the system works, that's understanding and figuring out what is happening at the moment. And there is designing a solution so to get out of the rut you're in, changing the system. And if you do the Conway maneuver or the inverse Conway, like depending on how you use Melvin, Melvin Conway's theories there, um, you can use it in both ways. Mm -hmm. So you can change the contextual structure of your software to let the teams be incentivized to follow. Or you can change how the organization actually operates and then make it easier for the architecture to follow along. This is something that we use in domain-driven design a lot. That's the extreme example here is that yeah. you, you do your sort of software architecture yeah. and then you physically move people around. Right, that's the extreme so example. The, the, the systems that are yeah. tightly coupled are owned by people who sit next exactly. to each other. Exactly. Yeah. And the, the more realistic example, uh, the, the more realistic theory behind this, uh, there are various ways of having a relationship with another team. Uh, it's eye to eye level or upstream downstream and this to varying degrees. You can have like a customer supplier relationship or you can be like a conformist to someone else's model which would be like a 100% downstream and, and, and various different patterns. This is all part of the, of the DDD design school. Um, using all of that to actually build software that reflects that, um, that matches then the solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. And tell me about, uh, so Kandinsky, this is the, it's the eighth year, but it's the seventh yeah, yeah, installment yeah. because yeah, yeah. Shift a year, just like everyone else did. Yeah, we had a pandemic, yeah. right? So you might have as well. So we, we had one. Sweden yeah, yeah, didn't cool. Have one. Sweden was like, nah, it's fine. Nah, okay. But, yeah, no. yeah. So yeah, we skipped one year because of the pandemic and we did an open space instead. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is why we now have two days of actual talks and hands ons and an open space at the end because we realized that's the most fun part when you can take everything you've learned and put it into practice all of a sudden. Um, so yeah. So I really like something that uh, we were talking about earlier was the, the value you get out of doing open space if yeah. it's on the back of two days of structured sessions. Yes. Because it kind of channels people's thinking. I'd often, you know, yeah. the number of events I've been to where it's like, instead of, you know, you have a talk and then 10 minutes of questions, then you have a talk and 10 minutes of questions. Yeah. Like, let's have two days of talks and then just a whole day of, yeah. of questions. Yeah. Yeah. You find that that works well? It works very well. And, and we, we, we even complement it. So we have 20 minute breaks between every talk mm -hmm. so that there's already conversation going on. And these conversations lead to interest. Like, oh, I would like to explore this deeper. And almost at every break and in every session, people are like, hey, this is a great topic. Do you want to do this on Wednesday, maybe? So people are already piling up a lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. And then when Wednesday hits, it's not like the U. I mean, open spaces are always great, but people always start with, what do I want to talk about today? And then somehow they build up the agenda. 
our Wednesday is with flying color. Like people just start and like, I have these 20 ideas I need to dive into. Have you, have you ever seen yeah. a thing at an open space where there's, you know, two minutes of people sitting around going, I don't want to, I don't want to put up a sticky note. Often, often, yeah. And so somebody yeah. will pick the worst topic ever. They'll put up something like why ASP.NET Web Forms is amazing. To have, a, to have a like, negative so icebreaker. If you have a, a better idea than that, put it up there. Yeah, and yeah. suddenly people are like, well, it went better than that. Yeah. So they'll put that up. So. Yeah, yeah. But I, I really like the idea. So yeah. excellent. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, yeah, we are signing off from, uh, you can see the stage behind us. So we're going to be uh, entertaining the Kandinsky yeah. crowd there. But uh, the one thing we didn't have time to do, we didn't have time to write a DDD song. But we have quite a lot so of chords sad. in our songs where we'll play D, D, D a couple of times. <laughs> this is a drop DDD song, right? So yeah, it doesn't why mean. not drop DDD? You know, yeah. it's like DDD, but metal. Yeah. So we're thinking we'll do a, a little game like anyone who spots where we play a D chord three times in a row. If they call that one out, we'll buy them a drink afterwards. That's amazing. Oh, yes, cool. Cool. All right. See you tonight. You, Marco, it's nice talking Thanks with you. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Take it easy. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.